I think Iceland is actually so out of all the countries. Iceland has the largest number of grandmasters per capita. Because population is what, like just over 300,000. And they have, I think they have close to a dozen GMs. Okay, new game. What country is this? Peru, ooh. Never been to Peru. Peru also has like a, um, at least a few GMs. Okay, um, do I play a Stafford? Let's play a Stafford. Everyone's playing E4 today, right? I guess I had, I had the one D4 game. Okay, Stafford accepted. Opponent thinking, this is always, this is very welcoming. So my opponent probably has not seen Naroditsky's video. Oh, but maybe saw it. This is what Naroditsky recommended. Da. Ah. Okay. Don't hurt me. It's nice that they're thinking. Ah, they're playing the best line though. I mean, I'm kind of prepared for this line. Like, this is kind of the worst case scenario. A white knows this exact move order. Uh, bishop g5, I can play this. Actually, I don't think bishop g5 is the best move. I think knight d2 is the best move. It's still not great for me. Um, but there's tricks. This is still an idea. For a moment, I was thinking this, this, this. But there's bishop e3 in the end. And queen c5. Yeah, I want to play queen c5. Doesn't quite work though. If I play knight here, there's this move. Knight c4 also coming, man. <laughs> okay, so opponent is is punishing the Stafford. Let's um yeah, let's be consistent with my plans at least. I'll pretend that I know what I'm doing. All white needs to do is castle, and then the game can end. So, what are the candidate moves? Bishop h4 or, or d4, really? So I'm preparing after d4 to play queen g6. Oh, there's also that. And this is maybe a consideration. Let's take with pawn. Oh, both pawns are hanging. Ah, but I can't. I can't take either of them. I could move knight c4. Um. Okay, still down the pawn. But it's um, it's actually not so bad. I have both flank files, and I have a pawn cube. Don't mess with a pawn cube. Bishop e6, I guess. So there's an idea of this and this, or this and this. Wow, castling is so brave. I commend my opponent's bravery, but it might also just be... Oh, that's a good move, though. Ah, I thought I was going to be attacking. Opponent wants to destroy my pawn cube. So I want to do this. There's a calculation. Rook h5 takes... Queen h7, queen f4... So maybe I should just play this immediately, defend this, and then prepare this and this. I mean, I want to, I want to um, build the gun, this uh, the the triple battery on the the half open H file. Let's go. Yeah, B three was maybe a slow move. Hmm. 
opponent wants to play queen g3 and build a, a diagonal gun. Rook h3 is... Rook h3 is just bad. What to do here? Damn, white's so solid. Can I play... Hmm. Maybe f6? Kind of slow playing it. So the idea is to play this and this and defense e7. And also later play g5 to prevent uh, white from getting these two squares for the queen and bishop. Play this first. And it's going to be a time scramble. Okay, so now I'm the... Yeah, so queen g3, g5 is such a nice move. It attacks the bishop and defends the pawn. And removes the bishop from defending h2. Wait, can I take that? Let's start with this. I'm not sure. Ah, I'm allowing queen g3 now. Hmm. I can't defend c7. I have this move. Okay, it's getting crazy. I do a g5, and I don't know what's happening. I sacked a piece, but I'm maybe winning h2. The bishop is kind of trapped. Oh, but there's this move. But then f5? What's happening? We're trading. My pawn cube survives somehow. I can win h2 now. Threatening this and maybe winning the rook. That's winning because it's a mate threat and a skewer threat. Let's go. Wow, what a weird game. Don't mess with the pawn cube. The pawn cube was pretty irrelevant to the whole like king side. That was a fun game though. Yeah, this is why the Stafford is maybe a little bit risky. Opponent played really well in the opening. Like this is this is exactly what Naroditsky recommended. But I'm pretty sure I mean I'm pretty sure Bishop G5 or Knight D2 is just good for white. <sighs> Thanks, Tagi. Win bit. If this goes on YouTube, say hi to Tagi. Say hi to homeless Pluto. And everyone else in the chat. Did rook e8 save the position in the end? Oh, rook e8. Oh, rook e8 is, is a saving move. Oh, I didn't even realize that. That's a good point. This is a great puzzle. White to move and survive. This is the only saving move. White's probably winning in the final position. Or maybe, I don't know. Maybe not, because I still have the pawn cube. But takes, takes, and it's a rook ending. Five pawns versus six pawns. Yeah, the game would go on. Oh, it's just equal. Yeah, rook e8 only, only moved to, I guess, equalize. Wow. So if you're watching in the future on YouTube, let me know in the comments if you saw rook e8. What a clutch move. I just assumed, like, because the whole focus is, like, on the mate threat and the skewer on the first rank. And it's a whole concept of misdirection. You're so focused on, like, this area, you forget about counterplay. Okay. Oh, look dumb for the win. Saw rookie eight. And there's also a pleb. Wow, well done. <laughs> 